not only did he cross the House of Commons once, uh, as he, how, he did a phrase about ratting and re-ratting. Right. Tell me about that. Yes. He said a lot of people have ratted, but it takes some courage to re-rat. <laughs> He did. He, he, he was 20 years a liberal. He really was the, one of the great figures of liberal social reform, social legislation, transformed in the face of Britain as far as the decent way of life of working class people was concerned and their opportunities. Uh, but then the Liberal Party declined and broke up and became, just broke up, fragmented. And there were two parties, Socialist and Conservative. And he wasn't a socialist. He didn't like the regimentation of socialism. And so he returned to the Conservatives. And they were not particularly happy with him. And when they turned to Tariffs, he was a free trader. In fact, he'd left the Conservative Party in 1904 because they abandoned free trade. And when in 1924 they proposed to abandon it again, one of the many Conservatives who wished he hadn't come back to them said, well, I suppose now, Winston, you'll be leaving us again. And he said with his wonderful smile, ah, oh, he said, I'll be sticking to you with all the loyalty of a leech. <laughs> what do you think he would think of the current state of parliamentary democracy? Because I've got the feeling he would not be impressed. We, we, we somehow do know what he would have thought, because I'm, I've never been one to speculate what he would have thought, because every time I open a file with a title on it, I don't know what I'm going to find inside it with regard to his opinion on that title. But one thing which did distress him, which, which is, is affecting many democratic countries today, is the decline in voter participation, the decline in the percentage of people casting their votes, and the concomitant lack of interest in the electoral process. I, mean, I can remember when I was a teenager, certainly the Member of Parliament during an election came round to every street. And he may not have knocked on every door, but he was there in the street, he'd have a megaphone, people would come out and talk to him, he'd certainly knock on some door. But now in an election campaign you never see your potential member of parliament. Uh, so he, he was so concerned about that aspect, the decline in voter turnout, that towards the end of his life he favoured compulsory voting, which I think happens now in Australia, probably in one or two other countries. And he, he, he was not happy when the when the House of Commons was empty, which it could be also in his time. Uh, he, 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 because he was such an interesting speaker, even when he was totally controversial, say during the appeasement period, when the vast majority of members of Parliament supported Neville Chamberlain appeasement, nevertheless when he got up to speak against it, the House filled up. That was an extraordinary phenomenon. There'd be 50 people in it, and by the time the word went round the lobbies, Winston's up next there would be three or four hundred people in it. And there was a wonderful occasion when he, he they, they all crowded in to hear him and he made a speech warning about the German danger. And somebody called out, Here endeth the book of Lamentations. And at that moment someone else, watching everybody then disappear, didn't want to hear the next speaker, said, followed curiously by Exodus. And the title of the book, The Will of the People, I love where it comes from. 1945 his wartime coalition had dissolved because the Labour Party didn't want to serve anymore in a coalition. They'd been 15 years out of power. They wanted to go back to party politics. So the 1945 election was fought between the Conservatives and Labour. Churchill, incidentally, had been the main scourge of the Conservatives in the 10 years before the war uh, for their failure to rearm, their failure to be alert to the German danger. The Conservatives were defeated, and as he was then no longer head of a wartime coalition, because it didn't exist, he was head of a Conservative party, which he'd never got on particularly well with. So they were defeated, and he was out of office. And people commiserated with him and said, you know, how ungrateful the British people were. And his reply was, it's the will of the people. And he really believed, I mean, that just wasn't a flippant... Oh, no, he, really, he certainly really believed it. He'd always, he'd, you know, whenever people said to him, talk to him about the ungratitude of the British people with regard to any election result where he was, you know, he, he had problems in many, he that always annoyed him, actually. He thought, well, wait a minute, the, what we're about is the votes of the people. Right. <laughs> the, that's what we're here for. 
And if they don't want us to represent them, then someone else will represent them. And his phrase, when he was uh, uh, talking about it, he was defeated in July 1945. A year and a half later, when things weren't going so well for the Labour government, they had a lot of difficulties. Uh, and he then made a rather telling remark. He said, well, the British people have always done what they like. But they haven't always liked what they've done. <laughs> The book is The Will of the People, Winston Churchill and Parliamentary Democracy. I've been speaking with the author Sir Martin Gilbert and The Will of the People, published by Vintage Canada.